distinguished guests, would you please rise as you are able and welcome the Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, the Honourable Elizabeth Dowdswell, and remain standing for the playing of the Vice Regal Salute. Her honour is accompanied by the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Ted Arnott, Speaker of the Legislative Assembly, the Honourable Paul Calandra, Minister of Legislative Affairs, Chief R. Donald Maracle, Chief of the Mohawks of the Bay of Quinte, Miss Ruth Abernethy, artist and sculptor, and Miss Michelle D'Emmanuel, Secretary of the Cabinet and Head of the Ontario Public Service. Mesdames et Messieurs, vous vous levez pour l'arrivée de la lieutenant gouvernel de l'Ontario, l'Honorable Elizabeth Dowdswell, et vous y restez debout pendant le salut vice royal. Son honneur est accompagné par l'Honorable Doug Ford, Premier ministre de l'Ontario, l'Honorable Ted Arnott, Président de l'Assemblée législative, l'Honorable Paul Calandra, Ministre des Affaires législatives, le Chef R. Donald Maracle, Mohawks de la Baie de Quinte, Madame Ruth Abernathy, artiste et sculptrice, et Madame Michelle D'Emmanuel, Secrétaire du Conseil de Ministre de l'Ontario, Chef de la Fonction publique. Please take your seats. Your Honour, Premier, Speaker, Chief Miracle, Ms. Abernathy, Minister, Secretary, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for all being here today for this historic ceremony. I would like to begin by recognizing that we are on the traditional territory of many Indigenous nations, including the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. This land is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. I would also like to acknowledge that the land we are gathered on is covered by Treaty 13, signed with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and I want to show my respect. Hundreds of years after the first treaties were signed, they are still relevant today. Je tiens tout d'abord à rappeler que nous nous trouvons sur le territoire traditionnel de nombreuses nations autochtones, normalement les Anishinaabe, les Chippewa, les Haudenosaunee et les Wendat. Ce territoire est aujourd'hui le lieu de résidence d'un grand nombre de premières nations d'Inuit et de Métis. Je tiens également à souligner que les terres sur lesquelles nous sommes rassemblés sont couvertes par le traité numéro 13, conclu avec les Mississaugas de la Credit et je tiens à leur témoigner mon respect. Dans centaines d'années après la signature des premiers traités, ceci reste pertinent. I am honored now to invite Chief R. Donald Maracle of the Mohawks of the Bay of Quinte to offer our blessing for our ceremony. In the spirit of uh, peace and friendship, let us look to the Creator and join our hearts together. This is a prayer that our ancestors have said at the beginning of any gathering. It's called the Ohodung Gariwateko, or the Thanksgiving Address, because we are mindful that we should be thankful to the Creator for all He provides for us to help us through this journey in, on this earth. Gunjokwa. Sedawansios, Gani Gariwesa, Ne Egadadi O Hodun Gariwat Tego, Unga de Went Noni Hode, Aguego, Unska, at any way noni ni unguat nigonra, Dano, de Tiniwe Rados ne Ogwe Sunha Suk Aguego, Skonhagai. Aguego, Unska, at any way noni ni unguat nigoro, Dano, de Tiniwe Rados ne Yedetni Stunha, 
G1 Jadis, G Sego, Yaka Go Hajes, Go Ago Satstonsura, Na Eoni, Yohage, Aguego, Unska, at any rate, Noni, Niongua Nigora, Dano, De Tinui Rados, Ne Aguego, Yok Yo was a G1 Jade, Aguego, Unska, at any rate, Noni, Niongua Nigora, Dano, De Tinui Rados, Ne Aguego, Yok Yo was a G Varon Yade, Dano, Ono, Gadi, Aguego, Ne Owe Rado, Ne Songoya Tiso, Ne Gasat Stonesor, Ne Soyera, Don Sohui, the Soyera, Eto, Nio, Dunhak, Neongwa, Negora. And so you will understand what I've said. My people, listen for a short time. The business of today has come to pass. Everyone, we will bring our minds together as one and send our greetings to our mother, the earth, as she still goes along, giving of her own strength to enable us to live good lives. Everyone, we will bring our minds together as one and send our greetings to all things that support us on the earth. Everyone, we will bring our minds together and send our greetings to all the things that support us in the sky and the heaven. Everyone, we will bring our minds together and send our greetings to all of the people so that peace will continue for all. And now, we send our thanksgiving and our greetings to Sungwayat Dizo, the creator, the great strength of the natural world. And we have a chapel royal in our community that was designated by her, ma her late majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, in 2004. So I'm going to say a prayer for the royal family. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless our most gracious sovereign, King Charles III, and all the royal family, and do with them, with thy Holy Spirit, enrich with them thy heavenly grace, and prosper them with all happiness, and bring them to thine everlasting kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we live in troubled times now with what we see going on in the world. So this is a prayer for peace. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and proceed, peace proceed, kindle, we pray thee, in the hearts of all men, the true love of peace. We pray that everyone that works for peace would have the help of the Creator and that there would be a good outcome of all our discussions. And 1710, four kings visited Queen Anne and we accepted Christianity and the first chapel royal was built in our settlement at Fort Hunter, the Queen Anne Chapel. So this was the prayer that came at that time. Sungwat Niha Garunhyad Garunhyade, Mogwasanada Gondi, Sayanetsura A and Dawad, Jinutsare, Et Niao Ninahunjagi, Jonanito Nigarunhyagi, Dagyo, Nego Nisarade, Yat Nisarage Ungunadrok Ni Oni, Don de Garioso and Nishim Gore Wanaro, Jita the Gary Stonies ni Rowdy Wanor Oxaro, Ni Ni Oni Dosa de Gwasarine, Jinoe, Don Don't Great Nyone, Nok Don Don de Guayadago. Jinoe, Negaya Dot Saraxo. Ego Ace Sawang, Negaya Netra Neoni, Negasat Stones or Neoni, the Owis Ontra, Junyahoe, Junyahoe, Awen. And in English, we would join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Chief Miracle. And now I am pleased to call upon the Honorable Elizabeth Dowdswell, Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, to share her thoughts on this special day. Votre
Premier Ford, Mr. Speaker, Minister Calandra, Chief Maracle, Ms. Abernethy, Ms. Emmanuel. Bonjour, bonjour, sego, good morning, everyone. On her 21st birthday, Princess Elizabeth, not yet crowned queen, gave a public address by radio to the people of the Commonwealth. In her words, wherever they live, whatever race they come from, and whatever language they speak. She said at that time, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. Today we commemorate the long life that she had and the pledge that she kept throughout her reign. We do so with a magnificent symbol, this remarkable statue. Like all historical statues, it asks us to think about the relationship between the present and the past. For me, when I look up at this statue on this land covered by Treaty 13, I reflect on the role of the Crown and on its relationships with Indigenous peoples, a relationship that stretches back for hundreds of years and one that Her Majesty took very seriously. Indeed, the very first thing we spoke about during my official audience with her at Buckingham Palace was actually the path to reconciliation. Her Majesty's commitment to this path was borne out in so many ways. One of the most powerful and most tangible things she did was to approve Chapels Royal in Ontario, places that foster dialogue between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. In Tyenda Mohawk territory, there is Christ Church, the Chapel Royal of the Mohawks, and as was suggested, it houses gifts from the Queen. It honors the Silver Covenant chain of friendship between the Crown and the Haudenosaunee, which stretches back to the 18th century. I've been privileged to spend some cherished times there, and Chief Maracal, it's absolutely wonderful to have you with us today. Nearby in Brantford, Her Majesty's Royal Chapel of the Mohawks is the oldest surviving church building in Ontario and the oldest of the Canadian Chapels Royal, designated a Chapel Royal in 1904. Truly a testament to this long-standing relationship with the Crown. And a short walk from our gathering today is the Chapel Royal in Massey College, which Her Majesty designated as the very first interfaith Chapel Royal. It's a very special place for the Mississaugas of the Credit. And just nearby in the Queen's Platinum Jubilee Garden, which the Mississaugas partnered in designing with us, we mark the everlasting nature of treaties. As long as the sun shines, the grass grows, and the river flows. Our mutual ties of kinship and responsibility expressed through those treaties inform how we live work and play together in a good way, coming into right relations with one another. I see parallels with how I've often described democracy. More than the casting of votes, it's really about how we choose to live together. And so when I contemplate this statue, I also reflect on the role that Her Majesty played, and the Crown still does play, in safeguarding democracy and shaping our civic lives. Through times of great change and uncertainty, she was always an anchor for us. In these times especially, symbols are so paramount. They carry entire stories within themselves. They stand in for the narratives by which we make sense of the world around us. They encourage us to pause, reflect, and sometimes to explore and even challenge those stories, but to bring them greater understanding and deeper meaning. Designed to last for generations, this particular symbol embodies the continuity of Her Majesty and her commitment to service that lasted multiple generations. So I hope that it will encourage everyone who passes by whether they be parliamentarians, civil servants, school children or visitors, to think about that service, about democracy, about reconciliation, 
about the ways in which this province and this country have changed dramatically during Her Majesty's reign and about how the values she upheld can help us bring forth the future that we wish to see. My congratulations to Ruth Abernethy for creating this striking work. Thanks to you, Queen's Park now has a second queen. Long may she preside here as an inspiration for us all daily. Merci, miigwech, miwe. Thank you, Your Honour. I'm now pleased to ask the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, to bring greetings. Premier. Well, good morning, everyone. And, and thank you, Kara, for that introduction and always doing an incredible job. It's such a privilege to be here today to celebrate the amazing life and reign of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II alongside Her Honor, Lieutenant Governor Dodswell, Speaker Ted Arnott, Minister Calandra, and I have to tell you, we wouldn't be here today without the leadership and dedication of Minister Calandra. He's worked so hard to make this statue a reality. I also want to acknowledge uh, our caucus members and other parliamentarians, as well as Secretary D'Emmanuel uh, as folks may or may not know, nothing moves around here with, uh, without Michelle's blessing, so thank you for that. And Chief Maracle, th thank you. Thank you for being a friend and thank you for attending uh, today. And Ruth Abernethy, thank you for the incredible uh, statue and the design. And it's, uh, for folks that haven't seen it, just stay tuned. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, congratulations to you and everyone involved for making this happen. Friends, for seven decades, Queen Elizabeth II put service before self. She was a leader, a role model, and a source of comfort and stability during very difficult times. She served as a patron of more than 600 charities and organizations around the world, including 36 right here in Canada. And friends, she's had the love for our country our people, and our history. She visited Canada 22 times, more than any other Commonwealth country, including several memorable trips to Ontario. And as we mark Treaties Recon Recognition Week, it must be said, Queen Elizabeth always maintained a warm personal relationship with First Nations communities. On many occasions, she expressed her admiration for Indigenous cultures and talked about the importance of the treaty relationship with First Nations from coast to coast to coast. This beautiful bronze statue pays tribute to Her Late Majesty's contribution to Ontario's history and heritage. It celebrates her 70 years of dedication and service to the people of Canada, the United Kingdom, and the entire Commonwealth. It will serve as a lasting symbol of our traditions and values. And we hope to edu educate and inspires visitors to Queen's Park today and for generations to come. Thank you all for joining us and may God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you. Thank you, Premier. Ladies and gentlemen, for First Nations people, the drum represents Mother Earth and her universal heartbeat. Playing a special rhythm on the drum allows us to listen to our soul and understand that our purpose and our connection to each other in the circle of life. Today, members of the Young Creek Big Drum will play for us. Mesdames et Messieurs, pour les peuples des Premières Nations, le tambour représente la terre mère et son battement de cœur universel. Jouer un rythme spécifique sur le tambour nous permet d'écouter notre âme et de comprendre notre raison d'être et le lien qui nous unit les uns aux autres dans le cercle de la vie. Des membres du grand tambour du Young Creek performeront aujourd'hui pour nous.
Thank you for that incredible performance. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come to reveal the statue that Ruth Abernathy has created. I'd like to ask our platform party to make their way to the statue. Le moment est venu de dévoiler la statue créée par Ruth Abernathy. Je demanderai aux membres de notre tribune de se rendre à la statue.
Thank you, everyone, for coming out to witness this historic moment. That concludes our official ceremony. May I ask you now to rise as you are able for the playing of the Royal Anthem, God Save the King, and our National Anthem, O Canada, and remain standing for the departure of the Vice Regal Party. We will have a pour l'Imme Royale et l'Imme National, et restez debout pour le départ des dignitaires.